Hey guys, what's up? Today we are going to learn how to create lists in React and how to update the elements and how to delete the elements of a list. The virtual dome in React is smart enough to understand what has been updated and what has been added or deleted. So it only updates that area of the list. So it doesn't really repaint the entire list. Also, this video is part of a much larger series on React. I'll provide a link here so you can watch the entire playlist. So let's understand how it works. And welcome to Text It Tutorials. <laughs> let's start with a brand new project. We can create it using Create React App. And the name of the project is going to be React Lists. All right, so the project has been created. And what we're going to do is go in the source folder, app.js. And first, we're going to remove all the garbage. Um, so we have a clean project to start with. So what we're going to have is um, a list of users with name and age. And we're going to display them as a list. And we can delete uh, a user and we can edit the name in the user. So let's start with uh, state first where we define the users. So here I can say state equal to, and we can have a property called users, and this will be an array. And each user would have name and John, and age, let's say he's 20 years old. The second would be, let's say, Peter, he is, 30 and let's say Jill who is 25 or something. Now we need to display this user as a list. We can first create a UL. As you know the list is wrapped with UL and each element is going to be ally. So here we can take the state and iterate through uh, to build each user. So to iterate through we can, we're going to use map function. So so we can say this dot state dot users, which is this dot map. And inside here, we can have an arrow function, and this would give us each user. And for each user, we can create an element called user. We haven't created this component yet, but let's say if we have a component called user. Now here, we're gonna pass user dot name user dot name and here we can pass uh, age equal to user dot h all right so the age is going to be property and user dot dot name is going to be value and this should actually return okay so let's create this user component and we can go in the source and create a new folder called components and inside this folder we can have a new file called user.js all right so this is going to be a stateless component so we can simply have a variable called user equal to and some error function export this default user and this user is going to have uh, props and so remember we have two props we are passing here age and name let's first create an li element and inside i can have a span and here i can uh, use this information that i've passed age and name so first i can say name is um, props dot children age because I have passed as a value here it will be props are children and this should be props dot age all right so now we can we can import this here I can say import uh, user from it's inside the components slash user all right so I think we can at least see if it renders first before moving forward. So, so I'm going to say npm start. 
that should compile the project and open it on the port 3000. Hmm, there is an issue. <clears throat> User. Oh yes, it needs to return here. All right, so now I can have uh, name and age here. All right, so now that the, the list is being rendered, now let's try to implement delete. Um, now let's uh, create a button here called, and it can have an event on click event, which will execute this delete event. Remember, we haven't really created this event yet, but it should be passed through the app component. So it's going to be uh, props dot delete event. So when I click on it, it should run this uh, delete event, which should be defined inside the app component. And it should be passed through uh, to user. Okay, so here uh, we should also have delete event. So I can have uh, del event equal to. Now let's create an event here before we pass it through. So this will be, let's say, delete user equal to. And this delete user would take an index and an event. All right, so here what we need to do is we can say this dot delete user and we need to bind this so we can pass this index we can say this and index and we can also get an index here which we are passing here and that should be here now if we want to delete a particular user from the list uh, we need to first thing we need to do is be, remember the state here cannot be uh, mutated so we need to create a copy of the state and so the first thing we're gonna do is we can say const users equal to I can say object dot assign and I can take an empty array and create a copy so this would be this dot state dot users if you don't know what this object.assign is, I have a tutorial on it. Basically what it does, it takes a state and it copies into, it create um, a duplicate. Uh, if, you, if I say const user equal to this.state.user, it will create a reference. It will not create a duplicate array. What I really want is to create a duplicate array. So I need to use object.assign, which takes an empty array and it basically copies um, all the elements inside the array and returns it. So users is actually a duplicate array. Now that I have uh, this array, I can find this element and remove it. So for remove it, I can use splice. And I already know where what I want to remove, the index. And I'm only removing one element, right? So it will remove that. Uh, whatever index I'm passing and now I can set this user back to the state so I can say this dot set state users is users so I'm replacing the users inside the state now. all right so let's let's see if it works so I have a delete button here and if I delete this guy it deletes it if I delete this guy it deletes it if I inspect the element it gives me this warning called each child in the array or a trader should have a unique key basically here for each child i need to create another property called key and that has to be unique i can use index as a key but it's not a good idea because if i delete it and add a new one it would replace the key so i really need to um, create a unique key so for temporarily, what I can do is uh, I can create an ID here and I can call some random string. So this give me, make it unique. All right, and then it should be for each element and I can make it unique, something like this. 
All right, so now here I can say uh, key equal to uh, user user dot ID. All right, so now that uh, error kind of goes away, the warning kind of goes away. And if the, the list is too big, I don't want to manually create all this ID. Usually your system would provide an ID, but here what we can do, we can actually um, use a third party tool, a package called React HTML ID. So what I'm going to do is start this server and I'm going to say npm install. Uh, react dash HTML dash ID this package uh, react HTML ID inside the node module now I can import this so I can say import and I'm gonna call it uh, unique ID from um, which is react HTML ID. So anything that is inside the package node modules, you can use it directly like this, right? Now, in order to use it, I have to create a constructor. So inside the constructor, I can use uh, super, and I would have to move the state inside here as well. Otherwise, it won't work. So here, this would be called this dot state and here I have to call this unique ID dot um, there's a method called enable unique IDs and I can bind it to this so now I can use this unique ID and instead of doing this I can say unique ID dot next unique ID and that should give me a unique ID for each element again I'm just using this you can create your own if you want to and if I let's say if I print a state here uh, console log uh, this dot state and see what really happened uh, this should be actually this dot unique ID that's a problem because I have done this unique ID enable unique ID with this so now this should have this method next unique ID look at it I should have uh, users and as you can see each user has a unique ID ID dash one dash one two all right so the next thing we're gonna do is we're gonna have a change event now that we have a delete we can put an input here where we can actually enter a new name to change the name and this input should have an on change event which would be let's say props dot change event we haven't created this event yet and remember if you want a two-way binding your value has to be uh, props uh, children so this is how the two-way binding work if you don't know how it works I have a tutorial on it uh, I'll provide a link here right, so now let's build this change event inside the app.js so first I'm gonna put it here change event equal to this would be let's say this dot change user name all right so I need to create this event here uh, change username equal to and what I need to pass here is I need to pass on uh, the user ID so I can say change name dot bind this and I can pass user dot ID and the user dot ID remember we we are getting this a unique ID so that's what it's gonna pass so here it's gonna have two things it's gonna have an ID and it's gonna have a the element itself which is automatically passed so the first thing we're gonna do is we have this ID 
So based on the ID, we need to find an uh, element that is being changed. So we can do constant um, index equal to this dot state dot users dot. There's a, a method called find index. And this will take a user for each user and then if return if user dot id equal to this id so when it matches it will return that index so all we need that index right once we have the index we need to take the state uh, dot users and then then get that element from the state and then create a copy remember we always need to create a copy when we modify something. Uh, we cannot mutate the state directly. So I can say const uh, user equal to object dot assign empty object here. And I can say this dot state dot users and index. So this should actually copy that whichever Let's say if I pass this index, it we should copy this guy. And now that we have individual element, we can we simply need to change the name here to the new name. So we can say uh, user dot name equal to uh, target dot value. This would be whatever the input element is inside whatever the value is. Now we need to create a copy of the entire users, which we did when we um, created this. So we can, I can actually copy this guy and do this. So I get the users, which is the entire state. And then I can replace this user inside this. So I can say users um, index equal to this new user that I just modified. All right, and then in the end, so this copy of, of users that I can set it back into the st state. So I can say this dot um, set state users is the new users. And hopefully this should work. So let's look at it. All right, so I have uh, John, Peter, and Jill. And as soon as I start typing, as you can see, the name is changing. I can say whatever is changing. If I delete it, it deletes. If I modify, it modifies. I haven't created an add method, but you can create um, add method. Um, that could be your homework. <laughs> It should be pretty simple, actually. So this is how lists work in React. And again, what happens is, as soon as you delete an element or, or change the value of the element, uh, based on the key, the virtual DOM figures out which element has changed and it would update only that element. It doesn't update the entire list. So that's the beauty of it. That's why it's so fast. And I'm going to upload this project to my Git and provide the, li provide the link in the description so you can play around with it. And I hope you learned something from this tutorial. And if you did, please uh, like, subscribe, and provide a comment. And you can also support the channel via Patreon. I'll provide the link here. And you can also translate this video to whichever language uh, you are comfortable with it. And I'll provide the link in the description so you can find out how to do it. Thank you.